Good morning. Thanks for having me. And uh, to all of our veterans, thanks so much for your service to this country. That's why we have our freedoms. I want to tell you, we just finished the show with Dick Belcher. And, uh, of course, he's a veteran as well. And we said the same thing to him. Thank you for his service. But uh, he wants to pass along his regards to you as well. Well, you know, those men and women who have fought for us every single day uh, have done amazing things. We have young men and women who are in Iraq and Afghanistan right now. And every time we have a chance to, to you know, to go to the stores in Rochester or in Akron, uh, the reason why is because of these people. I was privileged yesterday. I stopped over at the new VA center, uh, health center under construction. And to all of our vets who are listening, it's, it's in Mishawaka. Um, it'll be 85,000 square feet. It is, um, are you ready for this, Baron? It is on time <laughs> and on schedule. <laughs> Outstanding. It's <laughs> great. Actually about, actually about two weeks ahead, but I don't want to jinx it. Um, we'll be opening around September of 2017, and we'll offer a whole bunch of services that folks won't have to go down to Indy for anymore. Now, Senator, I have a suggestion for you. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm <not> by that. <laughs> Three weeks ago, I was on the telephone with the head of the call center for the entire northern region. Yes. Even he couldn't call the Peru Clinic. They have it wow. set up so okay. that you call the number and the robot sends you to Marion. And then if you're lucky, it doesn't send you to Fort Wayne. But it's way too complicated just to call the Peru Clinic and make an appointment right now. I don't know if that's VA wide, but this is something will, that uh, this this is a new problem. They put in a new phone system, and I'm not real keen on it. So that's just a suggestion. To me like they should have kept the old phone system. But, that's, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, I'll get on that right away, and I'll have an answer to you later this week. Well, I guess today's Friday. Um, I'll get you an answer next week on that. It's, like I say, it's just a suggestion, and they may fix it so it works wonderfully. But uh, like I say, it, I really need to be able to call the Peru Clinic directly. Right, I understand, and uh, I'll get working on that right away. Senator, the, the, the new facility that, that we are building that you just uh, were up taking a look at, when it is all said and done, what can we expect from that? Um, you can expect greatly expanded mental health care services there, um, much, much more uh, services available. <clears throat> the South Bend Clinic right now, or the South Bend Health Center right now, uh, has the ability to serve 8,000 veterans. This new facility will serve 15 or 16,000 veterans. Um, so basically, any vet who wants to uh, and is eligible for um, being part of it, there shouldn't be any restrictions at all in terms of ability to uh, uh, to get in there. It'll be a dramatic increase in medical providers who will be there. Um, we'll have over 30,000 uh, individual visits every single year. Wow. It will also include um, things like cardiology, radiology, audiology, um, so many different services, you know, colonoscopies, so many other things, so day surgeries. Um, much, of this, much of the services in Fort Wayne will be available here now. Okay. <clears throat> That's excellent. So it'll be, Go ahead. It'll be a really positive thing. Do we still have a problem in this country with veteran suicides? We have a terrible problem. That's what I thought. Uh, with veteran suicides. Tom, here is the heartbreaking statistic. Um, we lose 20 veterans every single day to suicide, 20 wow. across our country. And <clears throat> we um, added on hotline services. Um, as soon as we did, they became overwhelmed. And so we're adding more. Um, we have it backed up to the National Suicide Hotline. That got overwhelmed also. And so um, we're working as quickly as we can to make sure that every vet's call is answered every single time in a timely way and they have somebody to talk to, that we have the services available for mental health care. Uh, these are men and women who, who served our country, who saw in many cases uh, unthinkable things, things that we couldn't even imagine um, they've had to deal with. Think of a young man, Jake Sexton, from Farmland, Indiana, over near Muncie. So Jake was part of a Humvee team, and uh, he had to make a call on a, a car that was racing into uh, their forward operating base. He's responsible for making sure that no suicide bombers can come in. And here comes this car racing up toward the base, He's screaming and yelling at them to stop. 
He's got how many young men and women, uh, American soldiers, American service members, behind the wire, right behind him, who are depending on him to protect them. He's screaming and yelling at them to stop. The fella driving hits the gas, comes even harder. Um, Jake shoots uh, to stop them, and he does. And in the car with the guy is his wife and two little children. Oh, wow. Wow. And and Jake took his life a few years after that and then told his dad, Dad, I can never get the picture of those two little kids out of my mind. Um, and, and his dad told him time after time after time, wonderful guy, Jeff Sexton, good friend. Jeff told him time after time, son, you were doing your job, and and you did everything you could. And he said, Dad, I know, but at the end of the day, I also know about those kids. Um, and he couldn't get past it. And, and that's what our young men and women and all of our vets deal with on a regular basis. They had to make some extraordinarily difficult decisions to protect our country. They always did. Um, and we need to be there to make sure that they've got the care they need to get through those kind of things. Senator, we keep creating more and more veterans every year over there, waiting for a coherent answer on why. Well, the number is, is, that is there is... Um, dramatically, dramatically less than before. The people who are there are primarily in the role of advisor um, and are there with the other uh, service members, the, the, the Iraqi army and such. The question why is, um, if we had not helped in putting a plan to push ISIS back, you may have had an ISIS uh, controlling all of Iraq. And then you have an ISIS that not only has a base, but has the ability to plan, has the ability to put together uh, attacks against our own country, and has the ability to plan attacks right against our own state. And so um, they have uh, beheaded Americans. They have tried to plan attacks to come after us here. And my first and foremost obligation is to protect our country. And in that obligation is to make sure that those who wish us harm that um, we don't let them do so, and so that's why. Senator, we uh, we only have a limited amount of time this morning. I understand that, but I did want to ask you about the election on Tuesday. Absolutely. Yeah, your sure. take on it, and uh, where do we go from here in our country? You know, here's where we go from here in my mind is uh, we're all Americans. We're not Democrats. We're not Republicans. We're Americans who want to build a stronger country. And so, um, you know, as President-elect Trump, if he, his good ideas, I'm with him every single time. I was with President Bush when he had good ideas, and when he didn't, I told him I didn't think they were such good ideas. <laughs> um, and, and the same with President Obama. And uh, I'll never forget a uh, uh, an afternoon when President Obama came and visited Indiana, and uh, in the back of the building, took me aside and let me know on no uncertain terms how. Uh, unhappy he was with some of my votes. And I said, well, I appreciate you letting me know. And I work for the people of Indiana and not you and have a great flight home. Um, but, you know, it'll be the same with uh, sure. President-elect Trump. When he has good ideas, we'll be with him. When not, we'll make suggestions as to better ways to, to help the country. You have a lot of things going on on Veterans Day today? I do. I'm privileged to go and visit a number of veterans throughout our state uh, to spend time with them. I'll be uh, with the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution a little bit later this afternoon. Um, I will not tell them, or I guess I probably will tell them that they're an extraordinary organization, and uh, I'm the grandson of immigrants and <laughs> could, only, could only hope to be in your club someday. <laughs> Senator, as always, we appreciate your time this morning. Happy Veterans Day, and, of course, happy Veterans Day to everybody that's listening well, today. Happy Veterans Day to all the listeners. And, Tom, thank you for having such an amazing uh, organization there, the radio station, that, that basically keeps everybody informed as to what's going on and uh, uh, makes sure – that everyone has a chance to participate in that community that we love so much. Absolutely. Very well said. Happy Veterans Day, Senator. Thanks, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. United States Senator Joe Donnelly, our guest this morning on WROI. And, of course, we only had a limited amount of time, but we always like to talk with the senator about what's happening. And, of course, today being Veterans Day, I think Veterans Day, the primary focus of what people are thinking about today and then uh, secondarily the election and of course as we talk with the senator baron down the line somewhere we'll get back to the economy we'll get back to the middle east we'll get back to kim jong un <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 some of those folks and i uh, am absolutely certain we'll get back to those subjects <laughs> i think i don't i because don't because we've had two years of ignoring them 
it's like when and we, they won't be ignored. It, no, and it's like when we talk with uh, even on a local level, county commissioners, and we say, okay, what's the agenda for the next meeting? And we are aware that some of these items will continue to carry on. Oh, <laughs> they yeah. don't just they don't just hit and stop. It takes a while to deal with them. But I think that new facility uh, they're building really sounds. Sounds like it's going to be a great thing for our area. Yeah, it will be a very good thing for our area. And when it's coupled with how easy it is to get up and down 31 between here and there now. Right. You know, right. that's going to be great for people. Right. And, and I want everybody to understand, I wasn't, you know, complaining too much about right. that phone system. But so many times somebody will come in and say, hey, we got this great thing. And then it ends up being, I used to be able to call the seven miles from my house right. to the clinic and make an appointment. And now I can't. And that, you know. Well, yeah, but, but that's not that's not a knock on Senator Donnelly no, not or the at VA all. at all. No. It's just sometimes things like that. Well, and he said too, uh, he was very interested in that. He <clears> said he would get back with you on that next week. So at least you know he's gonna he's gonna find out about it and give you some more information yeah, on it. So yeah. that's a good thing. And I I fully expected him to be in a good mood, and I don't blame him because any politician that didn't have to participate in this election <laughs> that was designed by Salvador <laughs> Dali uh, is gonna be happy they didn't right. get caught up in all this. I don't anticipate. It'd be in that way for him when he runs again. I don't well, it'd so, be but. two years. Senator will be up for election because Senator served six years, yeah. and he will have served his in 2018, so he will be up for re-election. He has not announced anything yet. I, Between you, me, and the gay post, I fully expect him to run again. Yeah. And we'll just have to wait and see no how all that works out. We'll just have to wait and see how yeah. all of that works out. But uh, it's uh, it's always nice to talk with a senator on WROI. We do appreciate yes, that. And we do appreciate it. Yes, we do. As senator, he has less time, believe it or not, than he did as a congressman. That's right. That's exactly so right. So it's a good thing. Busy man. And All right. He made time to talk to us. He did. By the way, as senator. Yes. When he has more time than a congressman does. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, I suppose we ought to go to ABC News. Uh, we can do that. Let's do ABC and maybe a weather forecast and uh, cruise through the rest of the morning. Keep on, I? keep on. <laughs> That's right.